Right, welcome to part 4 of my Kiwi Crash Course. I have here our app from last time, exactly where I left off. This time we've got a new text input at the top of the screen. And we've made a binding so that whenever we update the text input by adding any text, it automatically and immediately updates the label in a scatter, which we can still drag around, but now we can set the text however we like. Going back to the code, again this is exactly what I wrote last time. And as usual, I put a link to a downloadable version in the video description, so you can download and follow along if you want. So, what are we going to do this time? Actually, we already have all the tools we need to make quite a complex Kiwi app. We know how to make several different kinds of widgets, we can add them to one another, and now we can create bindings between them, so that whenever a property of one of them changes, it calls a function. In this case, a function that sets the text of the label. So this is great! And you can create full apps this way, it'll work completely fine. The only problem is, it starts to seem like quite a lot of boilerplate once you start to have a lot of widgets. For instance, as you add more and more, you'll have to add them all to one another, and if you want to create more complex bindings, it can start to become quite unclear how they're relying on one another. For that reason, Kiwi comes with another way of defining the widget tree, called Kiwi language. This is a programming language, but not so much a general purpose one as a domain specific language. It's designed specifically for describing Kiwi widget trees and making it easy to, to, to have widgets interact with one another, setting specific behaviour for when things change. What I think I'll do this time is convert this program entirely straight into Kiwi language and hopefully try and make it clear just how easy it can be. So what does that mean? First of all, we need to know how is Kiwi going to find our Kiwi language file. The answer to that is that Kiwi always checks for a file with the same name as our app. In this case, it's called Tutorial App, so Kiwi is going to check for a file called tutorial.kv. Let's open that now. KV. Now, any Kiwi language you write in here is going to be used by our application. What is Kiwi language, alright? The way it works is you define rules for how a widget should behave. For instance, label is a Kiwi widget, so we can type label. And now anything we write here is a rule for how the label should appear. We can add children for the label, I add graphics instructions for it, I'll add cover that in a future video, and set bindings for it if you want. You've probably noticed already the immediate problem. We probably don't want to change every label Kiwi ever makes. That might be useful occasionally, but in most cases we don't want to give every label some specific new behaviour, but instead create a specific new subclass with the behaviour we want. Let's do that here. All the current behaviour of our app is covered by the box layout, or the other widgets are children of that one, and interact only within themselves. So we'll create our new class, say a scatter text widget, which is a box layout. And now we're going to use Kiwi language to define how this should behave, and give it all the behaviour of our existing app. In fact, we don't need any behaviour at all on the Python side, it's going to be entirely done in Kv. Now, let's create a rule for that. Rule scatter text widget. And now, how do we actually tell Kiwi language what useful things to do with this rule? The first thing is, the box layout in Python has this uh, orientation property. So let's add that in Kv. The syntax is simply orientation vertical. And the same for any property, we can define it in just this way. There's a little subtlety here, in that everything on the right of the colon, and this is generally true in Kiwi language, is actually pure Python. So for instance, I could have written vert plus ical, and because plus would be string concatenation in Python, again that would give exactly the right thing, it's just the word vertical as far as Python is concerned. Obviously that's not very useful here, but it will be useful if you want some more complex behaviour, not just copying, say, another widget's property, but I covered that more in a little bit. Now orientation is the only property the box layout has, but it does have some children, a text input and a float layout, so we define that as well, we simply write text input indent by another level, and now anything we write will apply to that text input. Specifically, it has a font size of 150, a size hint y of none, height of 200, and the text is going to be default. What this means is that whenever we make a scatter text widget, Kiwi is going to use this Kiwi language, it's going to make a text input, add it to the scatter text, in text widget, and set all these properties for us. Okay, it also has a float layout as a child, float layout. That has no properties, but it has a scatter, again as a child. That has no properties, but it has a label. 
and the label has a text of default root and a font size of 150. And that's it for the layout. Rather than creating all these widgets manually and doing what in Python would be this add widget step at the bottom, we've just written down the widget tree at the top of the scatter text widget. It's going to automatically have a text input and a float layout with a scatter and a label below it. Now that's almost everything. The only thing we haven't done is the equivalent of this binder method, changing it so that the text input's text property automatically updates the label. Again, this is easy in Kiwi language. In fact, even easier, because rather than using the bind method, we only have to refer to the text input. To do that, we give it a label, it's called, uh, an ID. I'll just call it my text input. Feel free to be more imaginative with your IDs. Um, and now the label's text, rather than just being default, will refer directly to that, my text input dot text. The magic here is that Kiwi language will automatically detect that we refer to a property of a different widget, the text property of the my text input, and will automatically make a binding so that when we update the text, the label's text is itself changed. This would work for any Kiwi property. I could have written plus the string of the my text input. Oops, my text input font size. And that would work too. If we ever updated the font size, this string would again be updated automatically because Kiwi language would, re would recognize we'd refer to the font size and make a binding appropriately. I wouldn't do that here, but I encourage you to experiment to see exactly how Kiwi language can make this easy. There is some associated subtlety. We can't just refer to any Python attribute, only Kiwi properties. But for now, it's enough to know that anything a Kiwi widget has will probably have the right behavior. I'll cover again in a future video the exact details of how this works. However, this is it. This Kiwi language entirely covers what the previous Kiwi, what the previous Python program did. It makes every widget we want. It makes this binding. But instead of having to make the widgets manually and add them to one another, we've just written down essentially the behavior we wanted in Kiwi language. And I'll claim it's not clear exactly what the program is doing. So now we just have to change the Python appropriately. Everything we wrote before is now redundant. We don't need to create all this. But we just return a single scatter text widget. And now, as before, Kiwi is automatically going to find our Kiwi language, recognize it has a rule for a scatter text widget, and construct it in this way, which should give exactly the behavior that the program had when I ran it at the beginning of this video. So let's prove it. Run the program again. The same file. Now we've changed our behavior. And it certainly looks the same. Looks like we've got a text input at the top, a scatter here, which you can drag around, resize and scale. And if we change this text, it still automatically propagates directly to the label, letting us change the text. But now, all done in Kiwi language, going back to the Python, the, Py the Python app does almost nothing of its own. It only returns a scatter text widget, which in turn, oops, which in turn has all the behavior defined here. I'm going to stop here. I haven't added anything more to the program, but I've changed it entirely into this language which makes it very easy to add more behavior and to expand the program however we like. In general, it's a good idea with Kiwi to write as much as you can in Kiwi language. There's perhaps a bit of an art to the very edge cases where it might be best done in Python or might be best done in KV. But most common things, like just constructing a simple widget tree like this, are very easy in Kiwi language, and you'll probably find it a much better way of doing things. In the next few videos, I'll cover more different subtleties of the way Kiwi language can behave. There's enough here to make a full app, but there are other conveniences that you can make use of, plus some other Kiwi features I haven't even touched on, like the ability to draw shapes, squares and circles and so on, and map images to them using Kiwi graphics instructions. Again, Kiwi language can make this easier. For now, I encourage you to experiment. You can change any of these things and see exactly how it changes stuff, or add your own widgets. Now you can simply add them to the Kiwi tree as simply as typing their name. You can add a slider, for instance, if you want to find out what kind of widget that is. However, that's all for now. Thanks again for watching.